getting children to understand when they've understood something and when they haven't is a really key thing. So getting them to be aware of this idea of mental models and to think about them. The first is modelling the process of comprehension. So just like we model the process of writing, and we do a piece of shared writing and we show them the decisions that a writer makes, modelling the process of being a reader, just like we've done with all these little extracts here, can be so, so useful. Saying, well, look, here's the word but in this sentence. What does it mean there? Ah, it means that they didn't happen. Um, what about this bit? What about that bit? How will we work out what this word means? But sometimes to pull an extract out and to show them what a mature and what a grown-up reader does can be such a useful thing because it moves things that we do automatically from our subconscious through to our conscious. The second one is, is, is context. If we're going to teach Julius Caesar, well, we need to teach them a little bit about the Senate. Um, I remember teaching Wind in the Willows to my first ever class. And I was so excited about teaching to them. And I read the whole first chapter and they all looked at me like, Wonderful. This little hand went up and a boy called Josh said, oh, I really like that, it's a really good story. Ratty's a rat, isn't he? Yeah, he, he's a kind of rat. Said, yeah. What's mole then? Never seen a mole, no idea what a mole was, never seen a picture of a mole. And so I've learnt never ever to take anything for granted. And even a photograph or a short film or something before we start reading can help all of them to build that mental model that we know is so important. One school we went to visit said we got rid of um, individual words on spelling sheets. If we give children vocab words, we always put them in context. So we always put them in a sentence or in a couple of different sentences where you can see them in bold or in red, but they can see it and use it in a sentence. And then my final one, which I really liked, was one school had, um, they said, well, we use bookmarks. So what we've done is we give every child in our school a bookmark. And what we ask children to do is when they're reading, if they come across a word that they don't know what it means, or it's a really brilliant word that they think everyone else needs to know about, and then what they do is that we have 20 minutes slot in the morning once a week where everyone gets out their bookmarks and we talk about the words. So we do this in my school now, it works brilliantly, but the best thing that works about it is that my class have started cheating. So what they do now is they look up, they, they, they find their words in their books and then because they know they have to talk about them later on, they go away and look them up. So you get to this point where someone says, oh yeah, um, I had, anyone have a word? Um, oh yeah, I had a good word, comments. I had um, pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcanic coniosis. Is it a sort of lung disease that affects one from breathing in a silicon? I, I don't know, I'm just guessing there. Now, if I wanted them to go away and look up words, I couldn't get them to do it. But because they think they're cheating and they think they're being really clever, they go away and look them up. So it's absolute gold dust. And then the final one, I would say, is, is about questions rather than objectives. If you pull out an objective, today we are learning to preview. Today we are practicing our deducing skills. It narrows down what you're doing and it flags up to the children what you're going to do. And so they're kind of prepared for it. And what we want them to do is to use lots of different strategies and to use all the different things that they know to make meaning from the text that they read. So a better thing in some of the schools we went to visit, which they preferred, was actually pulling out questions, saying these are four or five really rich questions that we can use to talk about in this particular area of the curriculum. So I would suggest sitting down, a better use of teachers' time is planning out questions and thinking about text and getting to know them than pulling objectives from somewhere.